All right, we just finished our spot illustrations, and maybe we're still correcting them a little bit, but assignment five and assignment six, these are the most commercial kind of projects we do in the class, because this is the kind of thing that professional digital artists are asked to do all the time. Spot illustration and type design, right? Because putting those two things together gives you almost every kind of marketing campaign you would need. And then when you combine logo design into it, which we did for vectors, you've really got a whole branding identity package. Now, if we look at unit 12 for type and poster design, we just looked at it really quickly last class. It's really simple in terms of design. I'm using the term design a lot. Design means to make a plan for something and then to execute that plan. So in order to design a poster, you need to know what the physical format at the end of the process already is going to be, how large it's going to be, what the dimensions are, if it's vertical, if it's horizontal, basically if it's going to go on a billboard or if it's going to go onto a, a movie poster. Uh, the format matters. And so in past examples, you'll see that from the very beginning, the students are thinking about what that end format is going to be, how much space they have to work with. That's called the picture plane or the physical format. And all of these so far have been vertical. Vertical formats are a little bit more versatile than horizontal formats, right? Especially for, for campaigns, marketing campaigns. If you think of Instagram, which is a square, you think of phone, video apps, TikTok, that kind of thing, which are, are tall rectangles. The only time you see uh, horizontal format is widescreen movies, billboards, bus ads. So you need to know that ahead of time. And you can do either one. You can do vertical or horizontal. But you're going to do a poster format using your spot illustration. And then what's the other thing we need to do? We need to design the type that goes with the illustration. So today we're going to be working on text blocking or type blocking like you see here and then making our black vector shape type just like we designed our logos now we're going to be doing it with letter forms and then next class we'll learn how to add color to the type and then how to add a background for our poster the type can be completely made up by you you know completely self-designed or it can be modified from existing type. What it should not be, and as a professional, what you should never do, is just take an existing typeface as is. <laughs> All right. So that's just, that's what I think of when I think of you can't just use the type as it's given to you, right? You got to modify it and, and work with it. But you can also just make it completely on your own if you like. That's it's called a handmade type. So let's get into how we approach this. We already know what our spot illustration is. Just like if you're a professional, you're asked to do some, some marketing materials, right? Promotional materials for something that's already been established. There are some amazing type designers out there. And then like kind of the highest level of type design is doing title design, like Papyrus used for Avatar, right? So Stranger Things, which came out many years ago, right, on Netflix, has a very, very, very clever type design, which plays with something that you've probably never paid much attention to, which is the space between letters. The space between letters is called the kerning. And what they did with Stranger Things is they kerned it to connect. So they, they took these typefaces in capital that are made to have like their own space around them. And then they made them uncomfortably touching with other shapes. And then when they actually did the, the motion graphics for it, I have a whole article on it here. Yeah, it's to to represent kind of late 80s movies. But the whole motion graphics, all it is is the type design, and it's showing their placement of the kerning. So this is basically showing how important variations in type are, so that by the end, you see how everything goes into place. 
And that's what's called type setting, right? So, so what we have here is type design, but then they're set. So there's type design, which is the actual letter form design, the typeface, and then there's type setting. It's how it's arranged together. And that's everything from the spacing between to the individual sizing of the letters, just all of this stuff, right? And then sometimes you have to customize the design. So like the T and the, the S had to have the exact same angle to be kerned that tightly. And then there's what's called letting. Letting is the space between bars of type. And there's whole articles about it with the type designers, with all the things that influenced it. And other work that they've done, you know, and how they put it all together. And then these were their different text blocking sketches, you know, different ways they could have done it, right? And then they use similar things for just their chapter titles. This was uh, an experimentation with the lighting. So this is now the coloring effect that goes with it. So type design, we don't think of it, but it goes through all these kind of iterations, just like logos, just like uh, illustration art. And now, if you're a poster designer, like Kyle Lambert is, making key art for Netflix and for movies, uh, he already has the title. Now he has to figure out how to put a two onto it for the second season and how to incorporate it with the key art, with the spot illustration, with the photography, with whatever they're using. So you can see his different sketches. These are his text blocking sketches. And then ultimately, this becomes the final art, and then this becomes the way that it's text blocked. So that all the design comes together for the second season. Here's a type designer named Rye Ford who just likes to play with text as its own illustration, right? So using the, the term guilty party, these are all the different ways it can be designed and set. And then this is the way he actually went with. And then these are the variations on it. Vari variations on the type design are what are called fonts. So this is the type design. These are the fonts. You have outline, you have normal, and you have bold, right? All for the same type design. Now, this is, this is a friend of mine I went to school with, at Kiko Sternberger, who does independent poster design. And every time for the project she's doing, she designs both the illustration and the type, right? So sometimes the type is handmade like this. This is a really nice example where the type also doubles as a little knot tied around the finger here. Or here, modifying existing type. So it looks like kind of the, the slate that was used in mugshots during the civil rights era in the 60s. And then we have Shepard Ferry, who we looked at, you know, when we talked about appropriation and copyright. But he is always mixing his illustration with custom type design. And sometimes it's fancier. Sometimes it's, it's more modern and straightforward. Sometimes it's more chaotic. Sometimes it's more like steady. It's all depending on the, the attitude you want the image to have. So combining image and type together. And then it's very easy to just pick a background. You can see these very straightforward backgrounds. This one's a lot more complicated with the vignetting and the color. But it's really the illustration and the type that are the stars of the show. So this is what we're doing with class. You already have your spot illustration. Maybe you want to keep improving on it, keep playing with its coloring, keep making it better, but already you know the shape of it. You know the free-floating shape. So now we can start designing type that goes around it. And the first thing we want to do is to do some text blocking just so we know what's going to look best for our project. So in order to design your type, you need to know what text you want to use. And you want it to be as minimal as possible. You don't want to have you know, 12 words of text that you have to fit around your, your illustration. And the reason we did monsters, one reason, is all of these monsters have cool names. You know, Medusa is a cool name. Hydra is a cool name. Griffin is a cool name. So you can use that. Manticore is a cool name. Ogre is a cool name. 
So you could just label your monster in a really interesting way and then figure out how to design that. But you can also have some fun with it. So I, I chose the, the phrase man up to core, kind of motivational poster kind of image. And now I have to figure out different ways to block the type. So what I did is I opened up my assignment five line art, the line art I posted. And when I opened that up, just from the PNG in Photoshop, remember that my image size was 11 by 14 by 350. What we're going to do is give space for the type now, because this is no longer a sticker design. It's going to be a poster. And we're going to make the canvas size at least 16 by 20. And we can even go bigger. We can even go up to 18 by 24 which would be the, the next printable standard size, right? Anyway, giving yourself space for it. Then I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to fill it with white. Edit fill white, just so I can see it clearly. Put that behind my spot illustration. And then lock my spot illustration, just like if we were coloring. Lock my white. But now, on top of my illustration letter, I'm going to make a text blocking sketch. So I asked you to come into class already thinking about what type you want and where you want it to go. So there's a lot of ways you can text block. I tend to just do it by hand, like this. 